Um, so my first question is for Ian. Um, since you are new to the show, how was it coming in, not only to an established character, but for um, a plot line that was so pivotal for the character? It's literally been building since season one, the showdown between Rick and Rick Prime. So, I mean, you're not only just voicing Rick, but you had to voice the ultimate showdown. So, so how was doing that? Sure. Uh, yeah, hit the ground running as soon as we began. I, I began my work on this season, um, and uh, the, the scripts pulled no punches. There's, as you said, thrown right into it. Helps to have been a fan for the the full ten years leading up to um, my part in it. Uh, great to be part of the team, of course. But it's you know it helps to have gone on that journey since season one myself as a fan and, and to not just have familiarity, but be invested in the storyline as well. Uh, in taking on the role, I, I, it's my chief responsibility is the story and and to try to serve that. So um, it's something I take seriously every time I record. Um, there's there's I've, I've called this job fun. It is, um, but it's there's a responsibility to storytelling that um, touches this fan base worldwide. So um, yeah, it's it's a big undertaking, and uh, it's it's one I'm happy to to take on uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Um. Did you guys uh, record in order of like the, how the episodes were released? Um. So like, because I think the showdown between Rick Prime happens only like a few episodes in, like episode four or five. So I mean, Perfect. you had to go from zero to one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we did record out of sequence and there was certain moments and, and a full episode sometimes that we would go back and re-record after, uh, you know, hearing sort of where I was at with the voice once we were in the swing of things. Um, I will say 705 is, you know, there's a lot that, that happens there and it's definitely an episode I'll come back to as, as one that was most fun to work on as an actor, just with the vocal range that you hear in that episode and what's demanded from those roles. But um, in in serving the story, there there's... there's um, a need to keep it grounded and keep these characters human uh, and distinct and and honor Rick Prime's journey as well as uh, our, our Rick's journey. Uh, so it, I think that, I don't know if this is intentional, but I think we recorded a lot of 705 after I'd sort of gotten into the pocket with it so that I could feel most comfortable most uh, as Rick when, when recording. Uh, so I appreciated the guidance that I had every step of the way from the production team to so allowing me to 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 work uh, and do my best work in that in that way. Great, thank you. Um, my next question is for Spencer. Um, Summer is actually one of my favorite characters on the show, um, and um, I wanted to ask you how has her journey been for you? Because at first she kind of was a basic um, teen girl, like the sister kind of character, but she's evolved so much and is like kind of a main character of her own story and her own right, especially after I loved the um the the Quado episode like that. I was just like summer is the best. <laughs> so I just wanted to see what what it's been like for you um playing her. Yeah, I mean, they really get, give me, when they give me one of those episodes, it, it really, it's been really funny. You know, we've sort of been working up to that, I think. Uh, and so now Summer gets to be like an action star at least once every every episode, but there've been little moments of it throughout. And I think, you know, they're just like trying it out to see how the audience feels about it or how it works in the dynamic of the the story and the family. So I, I've loved the journey. I think Summer's journey from that first season to now has been organic but also been uh also reflective of the time that we're living it you know we've gone from like socially we've gone from like the me too movement started in the moment of this show starting as well so we've had like a, an entire world sort of change of uproarious experiences all over we've been through a pandemic we like it's been crazy like we it's a lot going on so our show has kind of been able to keep some of that because it, it it pushes the boundaries a lot. I think it pushes a lot of boundaries in comedy and in, in dynamics and all, all while maintaining sort of this root of, of, a, of a heart of a human experience, you know, of that, like, what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? What were we put here to do? Uh, how do we bring entertainment to the world? How do we make life a little bit uh, more livable in some ways? So, you know, I that's why I got into this job was like that, 
to, to do what I do to make people laugh, to give a, an audience a catharsis of an experience. So I think Summer's Journey has been great. I mean, I can't, I, I love that I get to do that. I get great one-liners. I get to be a badass, like things that are a lot harder to do on camera. You know, I get to do with my voice. Um, I, you know, as a fan of the show, I see that, um, to me, summer is a lot more Rick's like grandkid, you know, rather than Morty, okay. who's not at all like him. Um, where would you kind of like to see their, uh, relationship go in future, um, seasons? I know I've been, people keep asking me like, well, what storyline would you want? And I was like, well, it would be cool if summer has a summer prime or like, what about a citadel of summers or like an evil summer? And like, what is that? What does that mean? What, what happens to summer when she meets the summer who's more summery than summer, you know, what happens to her dynamic with Rick? Is she competitive? Uh, you know, does she get to have a, a clone? Does she get to have a space summer? Like, is there a space summer somewhere where, where she's like living her best life? Um, you know, she's, she like the original summer, right? From season one died, right? Like she, she was living, you know, she was doing the Jaws thing. We lost her in the Cronenberg episode. Like, so this summer is from C-137, right? So I, I always say that she's the summeriest summer, but, but I don't know. I don't know. Like, is is Jerry who's still alive out there in the woods? Like, who's a lot lost his whole family? More Jerry than the Jerry we know today. Like, I don't know. But I think there's an endless possibility of of uh, of Summers. I would love to see her become even more like Rick. I think there's, I think Summer could go darker and then find her heart again at some point. You know, like I don't know if she's ever really explored her. Like she's hasn't been married. Not really. Like she's just a teenage girl experiencing love and doesn't really believe in it. You know, there's there's something really apathetic to her character. She really doesn't have that kind of uh, depth that Rick is going through at the moment, nor would she in any circumstance because she's a 17 year old girl and her brain isn't fully developed until she's like 30 years old. So, you know, what would that look like? Anyway, that's it. That's me just waffling on about summer. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, I guess we only have a couple minutes left, but real quick, um, the show is known for being unhinged and both of you can answer this. Was there anything in season seven that you were like, wow, I never saw that. Like I, that joke or that line or that storyline was not something I was expected. For me, it was probably the, the Pope ball, the Popey ball. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it's definitely, it definitely can push the envelope and that, that's a, that's a favorite moment of mine as well. I think for, for me, when I first picked up 704, the spaghetti episode, um, I, I actually grew up having spaghetti Thursdays with my, at my grandpa's. So <laughs> that's a real thing from my, my own life. And, uh, so I picked up that script with delight and horror, uh, of course, but, uh, it's, it was fun to see that. God, I don't know. I probably am going to have to second that on the on the spaghetti episode. I just was like, well, what is Salisbury steak? Like, well, I mean, what what is it? It's going to be something really awful. I think. It's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, I hope we never find out what the Salisbury yeah. steak was. <laughs> I know it's just endless you know that's what they, the joke is always like it's it's always what we imagine is always worse than what we actually see on screen so it's sort of whatever your worst nightmare is you're like it's really just the drain the like the dirt and the it's like the hair in the drain from another planet like I that would be literally the most disgusting thing I could <laughs> so okay yeah. well, I hope that's great. not true Thank you so much for talking to me and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks Thank so you. much as well.